Okay, this is Jeff, W6FCC. I'm going to go over a couple things here that might be of interest. Who knows? The ICOM remote utility can actually support multiple radios. On my system, I've actually got three, which we'll look at here in a second. I went up to the help uh, and then about, and this is a version 2.11 of the utility. The same concept works with the uh, earlier versions. So here we have these three radios, and they're assigned to COM port uh, 6, 4, and 10. And if I bring up the device manager, which I'll do right now, go down here to search windows, and let's just type in device manager. There it is. Uh, in the device manager, you can see when you click on ports that I have four ports, not just three. So what are, these things say they're on 4, 6, and 10, so we have those taken care of. What's this COM port 5? That came on when I turned the radio on. So you double click this and you go over here to events. And it says this is a 7610B. This is the uh, this is the other port, the alternate port back there. One of them is a USB 2 port, one of them is a USB 3 port. I'm not using the USB 3 port, but if I plugged in a cable over there, it's a good chance that this port would be active. The other thing about these ports is if you notice here, this thing says that it's 709, that's how it ends. And let me take a look at one of the other ones, uh, like 4, we'll just see. You go over here to events. And this is a 7300 that ends with 3005. So how do I know exactly which one this is when you're adding radios? So let's see, we're looking for 3005. So let me put this away again, 3005. And I go here to the radio and I look at options and I go to uh, local server settings, do I? and I click on this one and I say properties. This one ends with 2709 so that's the 7610. This one in properties ends with 734 so that's not the right one. And this one, COM4, which we know is the correct one, but this one I'll take a look at properties and there is the 3005. So to navigate around here to see what you're seeing is these COM port settings um, can be seen here and also in the device manager. Now when you have multiple radios connected to your ICOM server, you probably want to give them names. So I named this one 7600-7D because I'm using the 7D address, but this detail down here doesn't show up in the radio list, but this will show up in the radio list right here. It also has to be public in order to be usable by a uh, outside connection. If I turn public off and save it, I won't be able to connect to the radio remotely. I'll be able to use it only locally. So that's another kind of a thing to take a look at. The fact that this supports multiple radios is, is, is interesting in itself. If you do want to run a 7300 and a 7610 or you want a couple of 7300s, you can plug them all into the same computer and they can all be uh, added as registered radios. Remember what you did is you went down here to add and up popped uh, that setting about using it locally or not. This is the accessible from other radios. And you notice here, there's a 7300-734. There's a 7300-305. It's already in the system, but were it not in the system, you would then click yeah, Next and go through and give it a name, and it would be available remotely. So that's uh, something you might want to know about uh, ICOM Remote. It can support multiple radios. And of course, then you have your users and you definitely want to add yourself. I have quite a few users because we're in a group of people that share radios. And uh, so I'm letting them get on here. And this is a test server, which is used to see what uh, people are. So the other thing to note here is going back to the radio list. Let me just get out of here. Is I'm using 
default devices. You'll see this on your connections and I suggest that you use default like devices. So when you first run the program from a remote you may find that you're being assigned one of the virtual ports. Well you can't use the mic or use the speaker through the virtual. These are designed for recording and playback of audio. If I were to connect to this one right now, let me just right click and say connect to it. Uh, serial port 6 because that's a real serial port. You notice you have these two uh, buttons become alive and this you can record into a subdirectory. When you record incoming QSOs, this is where the CIV, sorry, this is where the virtual audio is used for recording. If you then go to playback, you go here to a file and you want to play back something, you open it up and uh, you would find the WAV file that you're looking for and you would play it back. If you do this and leave it in some mode like V audio or file, you won't be able to transmit with the mic. So this should always be in, in mic mode uh, and it'll go there automatically uh, normally. So now the next thing is what is the default device? So let's say you're connected and you want to modify the default device. You come down here to search windows. You do sound, sound settings. Well, let's see if this is uh, this is the right one. Let me try sound in the control panel. And yes, it is. This is the one that gives you, and this is Windows 10. Playback, recording, sounds, and communication. In the playback, the thing might default to one of these three V audios. In that case, you won't be able to hear anything off your speakers, but you'll be able to record things. But this is not the right choice for uh, normal operation. So in this case, I would use uh, something that's actually connected, and you can check it by going over here to sounds and clicking this and playing one of the sounds, and it'll test it. You can also right click on this, look at the properties, and you can do things like change the level. Uh, you change it here, and it doesn't change it on the radio in RSPA1, but this gives you the max that you're allowed to set uh, for your audio. So I'll leave it at, at 100, but I may come back and change that. Now on the recording, this is where your microphone comes in. Again, it may assign you to one of these V audio ports because when you tell it that the audio is default, it will go and find the first device that it can find that's working. And unless you've specified that this is the default device, it'll just find one that's ready. You, you don't necessarily have default devices in Windows, but when you set it, you're sure that ICOM Remote Utility and RSB and everything will go through that proper default device. So you do want to set that and you can do that at uh, any time. But once you've done it, if I were to come down here and pick a different microphone and set it as default, you notice this one becomes the default, but that's not the one that I'm using. I'm using this one. And so that's uh, how I'm changing it. So there you go. That's pretty much it. I'm going to, uh, the proper way to disconnect is to disconnect any radios that you're connected to and this will allow other people to use that radio and uh, that's it W6FCC hope I clarified some of these things remember to run the sound sound if you just do sound you'll find the control panel in Windows and in other versions and also if you want to find the, the uh, virtual sorry the device manager you type that in there and this will take you to uh, the device manager where you can look at various things. Now over here you'll notice that uh, when you connect to a remote server by the way and you then connect to the radio that's provided by that server you're going to be using virtual serial not real serial. So that's good to know. And in the uh, sound you're also going to find that you have the ICOM virtual audio driver. Okay, that's it.